Here is Thurston again, across the face, and he picks up Inglis, who goes to Boyd. Boyd, chased by Lyon, gets it back to Inglis. Oh, the sleeping giant is back. I woke him up, I'm sorry. You woke him up. You woke him up. He was over there just having a peaceful night doing nothing, and you woke him up. Ah, uh, the Barraville bomber. I think Jonathan Thurston might have given him a little bit of a nudge as well. Look at this great play from Jonathan Thurston. Outside Darren Lockyer, holds it up, holds it up, waits for the defence to commit. That was Jamal Idris, so he went across the face of him. Ball eventually onto Darius Boyd. He summed it up. Would have thought, being tempted to kick, but Greg Inglis got himself into a great position. A very, very important conversion coming up. The last one from Jonathan Thurston hit the post. This one to put them more than a converted try in front. And again, they go down Jared Haynes' wing. And, you know, when you go into these big games and you, you go to sleep at night and put the head on the pillow and you're worried about something, you can bet your life the opposition will find you out. And with Jared Hayne out of position on that right wing, it was only a matter of time before they picked him off again. The Queenslanders know, they knew where they were going. Hayne should have been up there and belting English as soon as he received the ball. But you just haven't got that experience playing in that position. It's as simple as that. Nine origin tries for Greg Inglis. His 11th origin outing. Wonderful player. Considered by many to be the best player in the game. And a little, blowing a little kiss then to the, the Maroon, the brave Maroon supporters housed down at the southern end. Thurston, though, again the generator. Boyd doing a very good job. Jonathan just adjusts the headgear. He's about five metres in from touch on the eastern side. There it goes. He doesn't put as much draw on it. It just goes bang. Straight over the black dot. Wally Lewis sideline. And, boys, I'm sure our Kino, Kino replay will show that a great pass is only as good as the angle that the runner takes. Thurston drifting across the field. Just have a look at the angle. Inglis puts himself into a hole. No defenders. And once again, great positioning by the Queensland uh, winger, Darius Boyd. Inglis staying alive. But if it wasn't for Inglis's angle on that occasion, it wouldn't have been so effective for Queensland. Well, I guess it can be pointed out, Darius Boyd playing out of position when it comes to his club. But that looks for his first grade career. He still actually played more games on the wing than he has at fullback in the time he's been in the top grade. There's Nate Miles playing the ball. And that's David Taylor from South Sydney. Tackle just inside the 30-metre line. St George Illawarra, the, the club with most representation, at six. Now they're just outside the 30-metre line. Ennis making the tackle with Luke Lewis and a run for Matthew Scott. To the middle of the ground. He's about five metres from halfway. And Kronk is on in 14. Lockyer drives it down the ground. He's looking for the dead ball line and finding it. 22 plays 14, so we're back to that eight-point break again. We ran a masterclass a few weeks ago on the footy show with Billy Slater, the Queensland fullback, and he told us that he'd been playing with Cooper Cronk since the age of 14. And now tonight they both represent Queensland together, and you can bet your life these two Melbourne Storm boys, these two Queenslanders will conjure up something before full time. Luke Lewis. On the 30 metre line. And Lyon goes over for Jamal Idris, just on Kronk. Of course, he's one of the few players, like Brett Morris tonight, who has played in the green and gold before the state. Wayman lost the ball, but it went back, and uh, Jared Hayne is with the ball now. The Blues, they were scratching their way out of trouble. They got to two. Now they're back to eight. That's Waterhouse on the back of a really heavy confrontation. Well, again, if they can be next to score, they take it down to the wire. And that's that's got to be their, their assignment at the moment. Defend well, get an opportunity, nail it, and get themselves back on the scoreboard. Slater will play the ball. Ten out from his own goal line or try line is Falau. Friday night St George Illawarra take on the Eels that's your Friday night 730 game followed by West Tigers and the New Zealand Warriors and you'll see them in that order simultaneously up and down 
the East Coast. So, Queensland then approaching halfway with Kronk making a half break and then a, a good tackle by Michael Wayman. Lockyer kicking on halfway. Drilling it down. Gidley's back inside his 10. And Payne is getting back there quickly to be with him. Oh, Thurston's taken the ball off him one on one, giving it to Sam Fide, and Fide scores for Queensland. Well, are they going to examine were there more than one in the tackle? Well, again, this is confidence and aggression at the critical moment in the game. Like a machine, they work it out from halfway. Lockyer kicks it downfield. The chase is feverish and aggressive. And half back on Gidley. Bang. All right. Now, in my rule book, that's play <laughs> that's on. That's Yeah, look. In my rule book, that's play on. Just to explain to some people who may not know the rule in rugby league, if the ball is stripped and there are two defenders involved, then it, they will be penalised. As far as we're concerned, that can sometimes be ridiculous in the fact that there's no responsibility on the ball carrier. Jonathan Thurston takes his one-on-one -on -one despite the late involvement from Greg Inglis. The damage had already been done. It may well be taken off Queensland. It's a try. It's a try. It should be a try. It is a try. It's got to be a try. You can't take that off him. Mentioned... First man in, steals the ball, off to a teammate. You, you can't take that off him. What a play that man is developing into. Sam Friday. Man of the match in the test against New Zealand. It is a try. Benefit of the doubt, no doubt there. No doubt now on the scoreboard. Bill Harrigan and Paul Simpkins, the video judges tonight. 26 to 14. 67 minutes gone. And you would think of it a common sense applied there with the rule interpretation. It's a crazy, crazy rule. I hate it. But somebody showed some common sense and discretion. I actually interviewed one of the first grade referees at a luncheon at Guy Mia the other day, Jared Maxwell. I said, what is the worst rule in the book? Which one do you hate the most? He said, the stripping rule. He said, we would interpret it differently if it was up to us. And I think very wisely there, Bill Harrigan and Paul Simpkins have applied some common sense because that was deserving of a try. And Queensland is now really turning the screws on the Blues. And already they start to look to game two and how they're going to stop this dominance by the Maroons. First in from right in front. And a further two goes on to the Queensland total. Wally Lewis sideline. And guys, just having a look at the uh, the replay, I got the, uh, the well the opinion that Jonathan Thurston, his sole objective when he went for this ball was to simply try and snatch it off the ball carrier. He just seemed to attack it, made sure that he grabbed it early. And I've got to say that decision could have gone either way, quite truthfully. The way that the rulings have been over the last couple of years, it can go any way. Well, I'm glad you said that because I, I think that's exactly right. As Sam Friday shrugs off a couple of tackles from the restart. Jonathan Thurston played at that football because he knows that players carrying it these days don't think it's going to be stripped because they'll get the penalty. Well, Jonathan Thurston, he went in, he zeroed in on the football, got it, and then got the, the just rewards. The Penrith pair of Waterhouse and Lewis putting a, a heavy shot on Scott. And Cooper Prong cleans up a dummy half. Almost on the halfway line, but Queensland out to a 14-point lead as Lockyer again drives it deep and this time it goes into touch well there it is again queensland they're a machine this is a wonderful wonderful era that they're passing through there's the coach mel meninga who's enjoying every minute of this but when you keep this combination together for so long and these people are so passionate about the maroon jumper they have developed themselves into a really awesome outfit and what you saw there was a repeat of what we've seen already a dozen times tonight. And Jonathan Thurston saying to the crowd, come on, get behind us even more. And I think they needed much egging on. And he may not play any further role in this game, but I want to pay tribute to the performance tonight of Matt Ballon as well. Cooper Cronk was out there, may well finish the game. But Ballon came into this side under enormous pressure, replacing Cameron Smith, who played 18 straight. Well, that man there on screen, a job well done from him. Did everything expected of him. 
Sharks, and he's going to be part of a victorious team his first game at this level. Well, I'm glad you said that, Pete, because Matty Ballon was not only asked to replace a number nine, he was asked to replace probably the most valuable number nine and possibly the most valuable player in the game. I said possible. But here's Jared Hay now. Up towards halfway, got a ball away to Jamie Lyon. And uh, Jamal Idris scampers into dummy half. And then Kamali puts a little kick over the top. Lewis is looking for it, but Lockyer's got the ball. And uh, Darren completing a fine captain's knock here again. 33 years of age and 31 origins. And 51 test matches behind him. He's been brilliant. He and Thurston just extraordinary. I mean, the big men up front have got to rumble up and get the yards and, and make the defence, but what these two men do off the back of it is just, it's brilliant. Costigan. From Papua New Guinea, originally. He's got his job done in origin. Here's Matthew Scott putting it down. Kamali goes back, Thurston tackles him. The ball is loose, it's knocked on by Jared Hay. But it's knocked on first. I believe the call is from Tony Archer. Well, even with that play there, if Jonathan Thurston doesn't throw the short ball and throws it out the back, they'd have probably had four on two, and New South Wales were in trouble again. That right-hand defence for the Blues has, has got some problems. He's got the opportunity to go behind Scott and decides to go straight to him. He had Lockyer out the back and plenty to beat. Watch, see, Lockyer's out the back. He's got two outside of him and two defenders in front of him. Lockyer would have carved them up there. And just to other halfbacks watching Jonathan Thurston, just seeing that pass there, the soft hands, the way that he shapes to maybe pass long, and, and if he did, it would be a bullet-like pass. But if you're bringing somebody on short on your outside, or even on a different angled run, you have to deliver the ball softly, and, and that's what he is so good at. Edris had an interrupted passage there. Nate Miles got on his road. He used him as a bit of a shield for a while. Now it's gone over to Kamali. He goes short to Josh Perry. And they try to lumber it up through the middle. Pass is bad. Idris cleans it up. And they put him to ground. Costigan and Scott on the halfway line it is. Gidley inside ball for Watmo. And Watmo taken from behind by David Taylor, the big 70. Eight miles, and here's a penalty going to the Blues. So eight minutes, eight and a quarter minutes remaining. Four penalties plays, three penalties. Queensland just leading the penalty count. Why would we take a tap there and just run it up? Play by Wayman. Ennis to Gidley, and Gidley drifting, going backwards, in fact, paid. Now it's out to... Tahu and he'll play the ball inside the 20 meter line. And now it's over to Gidley again. He goes short into Leroy Lyle. And Tom will play the ball on the 10 meter line. As Gidley steps off his right foot, looks on his inside. The runner was on his other side. And five tackles gone for the Blues as Ennis gets it away. Kamali spins it out. Then from Hayne, they've gone out to the Lion, he gets it back to Idris, he scores on Dubu. Jamal Idris, I think, has scored on Dubu. They're going to have a look at the corner post, and did Jamie Lyon have the ball when that post went? Well, it's great work running the football in the last serve, especially from Jamie Lyon here. He got on the outside, but was claimed, then was able to pop one back into. Jamal Lidris and that close to the line, he's, he's going to be unstoppable. Darius Boyd is doing his best. He's well inside, I think, from that angle. We'll probably have a look at where his legs are in relation to the sideline. No, nah, that'll be fine. And Jamal Lidris into Greg Inglis, under Greg Inglis, gets the ball down. Grounding is fine. And as far as I can see, Jamie Lyon was fine. No problem at all. No problem at all. There's Mum. That's a big thrill. Ten points of difference, seven minutes left on the clock. Improbable, but not impossible, Rabbit. Here's the Kino replay. 
Darius Boyd doing his best to get rid of Jamie Lyon, but he was able to get rid of it, Jamie, just in time. A decoy run from here, from the man going through on the outside of the passer. That held the defence up as well. It was big Trent Waterhouse who, who did a job there also. Noticed Hayne playing a fullback role in that try. He'd come well infield. He was the one that selected Lyon, who's obviously moved to the centre, and he'd risk back to the wing. But Hayne went in and parked himself in the fullback role and threw the nice cutout pass. Takes it in a 5 8 position where fullbacks play these days. He created the out ball for Lyon, and Lyon was able to get Idris back on the inside. Maybe that's what Craig Bellamy is thinking for game two. He's giving it a look. So the kick from Jamie Lyon from way out on the eastern extremity. Unsuccessful. Jamal Idris brings New South Wales back to a 10 point margin 28 to 18 with six minutes to go and it's marked by Gidley and given to Leroy Lars he ran it straight at Nate Miles and Friday went in Scott was there as well they're back on their own 20 meter line his Wayman and Wayman refusing to go down but now the shoulder of Sivan Asiva has its effect well they would love a penalty in New South Wales they can't just afford to go set for set with coins then they'll get beaten they'll run out of time need to try and force a penalty quick play the balls get out put some pressure on the defense where Kamali goes to the shorter side gets the ball knocked down by Jonathan Thurston that should be six again will be a knock on now Thurston so the scrum 40 meters out 68,753 so they just fell short of 70,000 I thought but the crowd was up there above it, but 68 and three quarter thousand. You know, all day with the rain that we've had in Sydney, and even when we got here tonight and had a look at the ground, how wet it was, I thought, gee whiz, how are they going to come up with points this evening? Two great sides with defensive capabilities. But you look up, and there's 46 points in the game. The modern day footballers are just brilliant at conjuring up tries. Well, that's what the Blues needed. They've got the penalty. Got the ball quickly over the sideline. They need to score in this set of six, or if they can force one more after that, they give themselves a chance in the last couple of minutes as Leroy Glass put on his backside. So nailed him. Got the shoulder down under the rib cage and drove him into the ground. Here's Wayman to the 20 metre line. Queensland's end of the ground. One change for the Blues left and two for Queensland. Here's Kamali, and Gidley is taken by Lockyer anticipating the play then Kamali gets it away for Watmo and Anthony Watmo is able to get the ball oh Kamali wasn't watching what's going on and now the ball to ground Lockyer got a touch on it Kamali has come back with the ball he'll play it nine meters out from the line Ennis goes over Gidley looks for an opening Gidley is tackled two meters out from the line 28 plays 18 Queensland in front as Ennis puts a kick in Kronk is after it, takes it dead. Well, I was sure somewhere through that there was a New South Wales player offside. offside. Yeah. Kamali throws a pass, and then before that play dies, he's already organising what he's going to do back to the other side of the field, and Watmo throws the ball out the back. Now, it hits Kamali, and Ennis is in front of him, dives at the ball. Well, he's offside. Well, he must have been real that he didn't touch it. Well, he did. Oh, I think he did anyway, but... That's extraordinary. I think you find that's what he ruled. He ruled that he didn't touch it. Here's Hain giving it to Wayman. Wayman runs straight at Cooper Cronk and gets the old elbow up in a don't argue for Cronk. And he'll play the ball, Michael. Back for Ennis to go. Back on the inside for Leroy Lars, who's made some strong charges in this second half, particularly. Ennis, now for Gidley, back for Kamali, and Kamali tried to go through, he got up and passed and gave it to Ennis, who gave it to Cray, and they're 10 metres out from the line. Queensland reassembling their defensive line urgently, Watmo, and he goes short to Leroy Lars, and Thurston upends the big man. Ennis again, behind Wayman, Fide comes out of the line, Gidley, not tackled according to the referee, Kamali, Goes to Cray. Cray comes towards Friday and Thurston. He puts a kick in. Played out by Inglis, who dives on the ball behind him. Well, that's crazy play. That wasn't the last tackle. What was Ben Cray thinking? 
and trying to kick the football there. Boy, that's pressure. That's pressure. You see, it's happened so often in New South Wales sides. They frustrate themselves into things like that. Ten points down, three minutes left on the clock. He thinks, I've got to do something desperate. It's Willie Tonga under there. From early to the forefront. And the last is here for Queensland now. 35 away from their own line as Lockyer sends the ball down precisely to Hayne. And Hayne is outside his 30 metre line. Surrender! But he has surrendered in the tackle and Nate Miles racks up another one alongside his name. Now for Brett Morris. 40, 40 sets they've had Queensland, completed 30, which is good in the conditions like these. New South Wales have had 36 uses for 29 completions. So the one thing I don't want New South Wales to get criticised tonight for is their, is their energy and their passion. I mean, they really have tried hard. And they haven't been great with their execution and their, and their play doesn't look terrific, but they have tried hard physically and emotionally. And it's just that they're up against a good side that at the moment are a bit too good for them. Kamali. Now Gidley, and he puts a kick in, Ben Cray's after it, and I think he knocked on. I think you'll find Ben Cray has knocked on, and it'll be ruled, I would imagine, a scrum. The tackle will be on. But Gidley, with Hayne back at the number one position, Gidley putting his stamp more on the game minute by minute albeit too late it would seem here's Cray you would have thought he got a hand there on the ball at some stage might have been his foot Ray I think there's the it comes off his foot I don't think he touches it does he yeah he, oh, so. maybe I don't know and then he just lets it get to the line I think he's <laughs> I don't know I don't know. I think it's come off his foot here. Does it touch his tan there? Perhaps it does. And then it lets it get to the line, and I think that part's okay. The answer's a pineapple, Rabbit. Well, I thought he knocked it on, but it's gone as a try. The grounding, of course, was suspect, but they watched that again. And 28 plays 22. We are practically on full time. And the conversion attempt is to be taken. Ben Cray scoring the New South Wales try. His fourth try at origin level. And there's the kick. It is successful. 28 to 24. And I doubt we'll get another kick off. The Queenslanders are just sauntering back to halfway. We count down. 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. There'll be no more play tonight. The Blues are going to come up short. 7, 6, 5, 4. Time. Origin 1 is over for 2010. The birthday celebrations will continue through the series. But now Queensland are on the precipice of a five-peat.